Hello, welcome to the Center for Parenting Education and our webcast called Partners in Parenting, Working Together as a Team. In this podcast, we'll explore a topic that many parents struggle with, how to develop an effective partnership with the person or people who are involved with them in raising their children. Not only is this important for the healthy development of your children, but it also makes the job of parenting less frustrating and more rewarding. And perhaps most importantly, it can give you the feeling that you're not alone in doing this most important job of raising your children. Having support and someone to share in the decision-making can relieve a lot of the stress and isolation that so often accompanies the role of being a parent. In this, in this first session, we'll talk about what the obstacles are to creating this parenting partnership and why it can be so challenging. First, let's define what we mean by the term team parenting. Team parenting is a mutual commitment between people involved in the care and raising of a child to share basic philosophical positions about parenting, help out, listen to feelings, and appreciate each other's efforts. To support one another and appreciate each other's beliefs, needs, and abilities. To have an attitude of mutual respect and flexibility. To give feedback and constructive criticism to one another in a healthy and supportive way. That does not mean that you need to accept everything that the other person says, but it does mean that you need to hear them. And also to plan together how to deal with major issues or persistent problems, to discuss rules, expectations, and dealing with discipline issues. In an ideal world, this is what should happen, but we don't always live in an ideal world or have ideal situations. There are many obstacles to successfully creating and working within the framework of a cooperative and supportive partnership when it comes to bringing up children. We've identified three areas that compose roadblocks to parents in this effort. The parents themselves, family of origin issues, and the children. So what is it that adults do to make team parenting difficult? Sometimes other relationship issues between the co-parents play out through the children. Parents may use discussions about children as a means of starting fights with each other, never getting to resolving the problem regarding the children. For example, trying to get even, proving the other parent incompetent or wrong, or being able to assume the role of the martyr. Conversely, parents may be reluctant to discuss problems they're having with their children because of fear that it could lead to fighting or conflict between the parents. Also, some parents allow others to parent their children. This might be due to insecurity, uncertainty, lack of time, or the strong personalities of the other people involved. For example... A young mother might be afraid or reluctant to tell the regular babysitter how she wants her two toddlers to be put to bed. The babysitter is an older woman with children of her own who are grown, and she has very strong ideas about how things should be done with children. This mother goes along with the babysitter's rules and values, even when she feels uncomfortable about them. Parents can also interfere with the team parenting effort by keeping rigid role divisions. One parent may always be the disciplinarian and the other always the comforter and nurturer. You can hear the constant nurturer saying, just wait until either your mother or father comes home when a child needs to be disciplined, rather than dealing with the situation him or herself. For example, a mother says to her 10-year-old son who refused to turn off the TV and clean up his toys, just wait till your father gets home. You'll be in big trouble. He's going to take care of this once and for all. There's also the issue of acting impulsively and not thinking about the ramifications for the other parent, such as when one parent or caregiver sets consequences when he or she won't be around to follow through with them and make sure that the child complies. So, for example, a grandmother who cares for a four-year-old while her daughter-in-law works three days a week told this grandson that he would not be allowed to watch television when he goes home that night because he spilled his milk and he got peanut butter and jelly on the carpet and refused to help the grandmother clean it up. Or a father who let the three-year-old nap extra long when it will be the mother who's home alone with the child that night. Another way that parents interfere with the team parenting is by directly undermining or contradicting the other parent by interfering with a situation the other one is handling, and they do it in front of the child. An example would be the following scenario. A father is disciplining his 8-year-old daughter for talking back to him. 
His wife states that she does not think that what the daughter said was so disrespectful, and that if the father had not yelled at her in front of her friends and embarrassed her, the daughter wouldn't have been disrespectful at all. The mother tells the father to stop disciplining in front of the daughter. Also, parents may value different traits in their children and therefore have different goals, reinforce different behaviors, want different rules, and send contradictory messages to the children. So, for example, a mother and father may argue because the mother wants her 12-year-old daughter to take Saturday afternoon tennis so she can learn new skills, develop interests, and be with other children. The father, conversely, thinks that his daughter needs to learn to entertain herself and spend time with the family. We also said that there are family of origin issues that can interfere with effective team parenting. This has to do with the kind of family that you were raised in. Most people parent their children the way they were parented. This is due to a sense of loyalty to their parents, not knowing how to do things differently, or just feeling good about how they were raised, feeling that it was fairly effective and had a good result in terms of how they developed. But if parents come from homes with very different parenting styles, this can lead to conflict and misunderstandings. Depending on their parents' relationship, many people had no role models for an effective team approach. Their own parents didn't work together in a supportive partnership. Also in today's society, the nuclear family is no longer the norm. Many people now live in families in family arrangements different from ones in which they were raised and for which they have no experience and no model to use to create healthy family dynamics. These other family configurations can be difficult in their own way. For example, grandparents raising children, single parents, parents living with their parents, two working parents, children shuffling back and forth between the homes of their divorced parents, and so on. There are basically three different parenting styles that we can take a look at, with two being at the opposite ends of a disciplined pendulum arc and one being in the middle between the two. One of the extremes is the permissive style, also called the submissive or jellyfish style. This parent does not set limits, say no, discipline, or hold children accountable. In this family, the children rule the roost. The other extreme is the aggressive style, also called the authoritarian or brick wall style. In this family, children's needs and feelings are not considered. Rigid compliance from children is demanded, and children are to be seen and not heard. The middle style between the two extremes is called the assertive style, also known as the authoritative or backbone style. And this consists of parents who use consider the children's needs and feelings, and that it stands for both the parent and the child. The parent is respectful in modeling and respecting expecting respect. They teach their children to be respectful. These parents are firm yet flexible. They stay calm and are clear in their communication with their rules and expectations. The parents are confident in their need to impose limits and to discipline, but they do it in a caring way. This slide shows again the discipline and parenting style arc. Here's an example of how these three different types of parents would respond to the same situation. Ten-year-old Ari leaves his games, books, and clothes all over the family room, even after being asked numerous times to pick up after himself. The jellyfish parent would say, Oh, honey, I see your stuff is still left out. I guess you were too busy to clean up. I'll clean up for you so you can find everything next time you want to play with them. The brick wall or aggressive parent would say, I'm sick and tired of seeing your things all over the room. Why are you such an irresponsible slob? That's it for you. You're grounded for a week and I'm throwing out all your things. The backbone or authoritative parent would say, Ari, I see your games are still not put away as I asked you to do. It's really bothering me that I can't count on you to take care of your things and I can't stand seeing the family room be such a mess. We need to come up with a plan for you to put your things away. Until we can agree upon the plan, there's no electronics for you. It may be loyalty to either the brick wall or jellyfish family of origin style that leads one parent to consistently be a harsh disciplinarian and the other to be the consistent nurturer. Often these parents may not start out too far apart from one another, but as time goes on, their roles solidify and each one goes further and further to the extreme in order to compensate for what they see as inadequacies in how their partner handles situations. We also said that children have uh, an effect on team parenting. Some things 
are beyond the children's control and other factors are related to their behavior. The first is birth order of the child. Sometimes parents who grew up in the same birth order of one of their children identifies with that child more than other children and is more sympathetic and understanding of that child's perspectives. For example, a firstborn parent may not want to burden their oldest child with too many chores and rules as they had been when they were a child. But a parent who is the youngest may feel that the oldest child should babysit and spend time with the younger siblings. The next is the temperament of both the child and the parent. Parents may be able to relate better to children with similar, similar temperaments, or conversely, they may be more negative towards a child who has traits that the parent does not like in himself. For example, a very intense parent may really enjoy and identify with his child's drama and passion, or he may dislike seeing that quality in his child. The other parent may react entirely differently and have different responses to and expectations for this child. And then there's also the case where ch the children may play one parent or caregiver against the other. Children are experts at dividing and conquering, sensing areas of disagreement and using them to get around the rules. If parents are not careful about this, it can lead to frustration and anger at each other for not being supportive, holding to agreements, or respecting the wishes of the other parent. After listening to this session of creating a parenting partnership, you can see that there are many obstacles and that parents and caregivers must overcome to create a positive and effective team approach to raising children. This slide summarizes most of the things that we talked about in this webcast. In the next session, you'll learn specific tips, skills, and attitudes that will help you to overcome the challenges and be successful in working together as a team with your co-parents. Thank you for joining us.